Pathfinders, attention. Will the audience please stand for the presentation of the colors? Pathfinders, forward, march. Pathfinders, company, halt. Color guard, prepare to post the colors. Post the colors. Pathfinders, present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order arms. Face front. Path, please face the Pathfinder flag with hand over heart. Please repeat the Pathfinder pledge in law. By the grace of God, I will be pure and kind and true. I will keep the Pathfinder law. I will be a servant to God and a friend to man. The Pathfinder law is for me to keep the morning watch, do my honest part, Care for my body, keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly in the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, and go on God's errands. Order arms. Face front. Pathfinders, at ease. Seats. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. So I want to welcome each and every one of you here this morning. It is a beautiful Sabbath, and it is a blessing to be able to come and worship here together with all of you. Uh, right now, I would like to invite Pastor Teddy and Tiana up here for some announcements. So thankful that the Pathfinders are leading our worship service today. And as you know, we like to keep track of each other and the family, of the Seventh-day Adventist family, and we have some transfers today. We have a couple of people transferring in, uh, Sue and Merrill Patton, and they are right here. Just raise your hands for us, would you? We are so glad to have you coming into our church family. And we have transferring out a couple of conference presidents, uh, Minner and Evelyn Minner back to, uh, east, and Al and Beth Reimke uh, to the Alberta Conference Church in Alberta. And we hate to see them go, but know that they will be blessings wherever they are landing. And so I wonder if there's a motion that we go ahead and grant these transfers. Oh, good. And is there a second? <laughs> All in favor, put your hands together and let's just warm Sue and Merrill especially. Thank you so much. Good morning, church family. I am up here again because we would like to do a quick announcement and a report out. Last week we had the scavenger hunt. And we had the blessing of being able to go and visit some of the church family members that haven't been here for a while. So we just wanted to show a few pictures. Maybe you'll see some familiar faces and maybe not. Um, but we have a list of people that um, we are still wanting to be able to go visit. So I just wanted to show you how much fun we had. And we're going to be having another event um, mainly so we can go visit some of our other church members who are missing us. And we were just blessed by being able to go visit them, and they really enjoyed having us come and visit them as well. So you can look at those photos 
Um, as we finish here, the other thing I'd like to remind you is tomorrow we have the community garden work B from 9 to noon. Don't feel like you have to come for the whole time. If you can come for an hour or 45 minutes or the whole time, we would love to have you come out and help us. It's just out here to the south of our church um, shop. So please plan on coming. If you can, we would appreciate the help. Thank you. Anna. So one more announcement that I have for you guys this morning is to save the date for Thursday, May 26th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, our SVAS grades uh, 2 through 4 are going to be presenting a Sherlock Holmes Mystery Mastering Math play. That is, try saying that three times fast. Um, guaranteed it's going to be a good time, so come out and support our grade school. And now as we move to the next part of our service, so as Pathfinders, we, we have a lot of fun during the, the year. And we have put together a little bit of a slideshow so we can share with you what we do during our time as a club. So enjoy this show.
Edmonton now. Kean McCormick is earning his first year braid and he's asked his sister Megan to be his sponsor and present that. Spokane Valley.
are so thankful to you, our church family, for supporting our Pathfinder Club. And um, we are especially thankful this year to people who came and gave worship talks for us. We really enjoyed having different members of our church coming and meeting with us and sharing Jesus. So we're, we're so thankful to you for supporting us. And I think this year has been a special year. It's been a real family Pathfinder Club. And I think that you can see in the pictures that the older students, our valuable older Pathfinders have helped our younger ones and taught our younger ones. And it's just been a really nice family atmosphere. And we are thankful to all our Pathfinders and all you parents for bringing your Pathfinders each, uh, each week and to you, our church family, too. Um, I'd like... Um, I'd like all the staff members to stand, if they would. We have, our, our staff members are a family too. We're, and we're so thankful to each one for all that they do. And our leader is here, <laughs> Miss Lola. We've been missing Miss Lola and struggling to cope with all the things that she copes with. And we are thankful to you for all that you do for us. Miss Lola is an intrepid leader and she has such a focus for Jesus and for the, children, for the Pathfinders to know Jesus and also to know how beautiful the outdoors is and to love being outside. And I think those are her focuses and we're so thankful to you. Uh, we, thank, we have two new staff members this year, and they have lowered our age, um, our average age, and we're thankful to Megan for her youth and her Pathfinder experience and her fire building skills and so much wealth of knowledge. We're thankful to her and we're thankful to Raleigh for Raleigh Stowe for the fun that he brings to our Pathfinder Club and also for his cooking skills and for his care for the Pathfinders. We're especially thankful that Tina, our organizing person, is here. She keeps us on track with all the organizing, and we have missed her so much, and we're so thankful. This is her first week back. She's been ill, and we're so thankful for that. We're thankful t for... Um, Cheryl and Kent and the wisdom and care and fun that they bring to our club. And we're thankful to Terry for all his experience. The fair wouldn't have happened without Terry making sure that we got there and all his Pathfinder experience. And also to Tom, whenever there's anything to do, Tom will always help and always do it. He takes charge of the trailer and the fair would not have happened without Tom. So we're thankful to all our staff members. And Tara, we're thankful to Tara too <laughs> for all that she does. She's so organized. She has such a wealth of experience and she shows such care for our pathfinders. And she can turn her hand to anything. She's a regular superwoman. So we're thankful for, <laughs> to her too. So thank, thank you to all that you do and for the staff, and uh, you can sit down now. <laughs> but at this time, I'd like to invite all the master guides to come forward. We would love to have you um, stand here and shake the hands of our pathfinders as they, as they come through. And we're also particularly thankful that our North Lakes District Coordinator, Bethany Bitten, was able to come and be with us. We're so thankful that she's here with us. Our, our coordinators really make things happen, and we're, we're really thankful to them. Um, and I th think there might be someone here who is related to the man who started Pathfinders. Am I right? Jan 
would, would she like to come and shake the hands of the Pathfinders? I don't know. She, her, is it her uncle? Wow. So if if she Okay, so that's a real history of Pathfinders. It's something that's that's made all this possible and we're we're thankful. So, um, I would also like to call forward our first our Pathfinder Bible Experience team. We nearly didn't have a team this year. We started late. And we're so proud of the determination of our team to stick with the studying. And we're so proud of all that they have in their heads. And I'm just going to ask Monica quickly. Monica. Can you tell um, our church what we were, what we learned, what you learned this year? Um, well, as a team, we memorized the Book of First Kings and the Book of Ruth. And that's a lot of verses. I think it's nine, nine hundred and something verses. I forget, but they memorized a whole lot. And one of our members isn't here today, Sienna, but we are uh, very proud of our team. And they made, it, they made it to the North Pacific Union. Can we? We're so, we're so thankful that you can be here with us. It's wonderful. I'm just thrilled. And this happens to be my father's who started Pathfinders, and this is what they call Master Guide. It used to be Master Comrade, but that kind of referred to another country. So they changed it to Master Guide, and these are his honors. <coughs> this is mine. It's kind of little, but anyway, it's not too bad. <laughs> some of you may have some honors. Uh, my father was child-oriented. He had to do something for the children. He preached to others, but you know what he'd always say? I'm going to use a certain name. And how many times you, I say it, you write it down. And those who write it down right, they're going to get a little prize. Do you know, the children were so quiet, they, they couldn't hear him say a word. And they all got prizes. He'd pass out little pins, you know, pathfinders or whatever they were. And then he would always show them these. And he'd say, now this stands for this. Now this one has, this one has an airplane on it because I'm a pilot. I flew many mercy missions. I flew my own plane across the Pacific. I went over the Golden Gate Bridge. It was thrilling. I'd always wanted to be a missionary. I thought to be a missionary, you had to be a pilot because I would hawk to these people who were pilots and it was so thrilling. You know, I never lost that vision. When I was seven years old at the General Conference, they had a huge globe and there were lights twinkling and my aunt and uncle were in India, and their little light was twinkling. I says, I've got to be one of those lights. I kept that my whole life. I've got to fly and be one of those lights. And you know, let me tell you, boys and girls, <clears throat> don't ever forget who you are, because I tell you, God never does. You may think, well, I never can do that. Well, I said, I'm going to learn to fly an airplane. That was really crazy. I mean, I jumped out of windows practicing with my brother and you know it was kind of crazy but you know what when I was 45 after being in the Philippines in many places I says I must learn to fly so you know what I did I decided to ask my son-in-law was taking Janet's husband was taking flying and I went to his teacher and I said you know do you think you could teach somebody like me to fly he says, I don't know why I can teach anything to fly. <laughs> well, I know because you're teaching my son-in-law to fly. And I'm scared because he might, my daughter might be left a widow, and I don't know how well he's going to fly. Oh, he flew beautifully. And you've seen him around here, Ken Pinner. 
And I tell you, honey, let me tell you something. My daughter, Janet, I only had one daughter. All the rest were boys. <laughs> I just want to let you know, if you want to hear the rest of the story, um, Mom is speaking from 2 to 3 in um, Loon Lake, the uh, Three Angel uh, Historical Church. So, um, Mom, thank you for coming. I'll be talking about my flight. And I have a book. I wish I had books to give everybody. It's called May Day Over the Arctic. You know what, boys and girls? Always follow directions. A, a, a mechanic for my airplane put the wrong size screw in it. And when I was flying over Greenland at 8,000 feet, the engine stopped. I went down 1,000 feet per minute and landed on an ice floe. I won't tell you anything more now. You come this afternoon. <laughs> but I just loved my grandpa, J.R. Nelson, the one who helped start um, Pathfinders. He was a, a kid's man, and they absolutely loved him. He was fun. He always had a twinkle in his eye. He always had those kids loving Jesus and loving to be a part of Pathfinders. Thank you for letting us share. I want to say congratulations to all of you. I can see you're all wearing the same thing. <laughs> and I'm looking over here. And you know, I'm so glad that leaders. I must, hey, do you mind if I shake hands with you? I mean, you look very important. <laughs> Thank you so much. We should all remember who we are, that we're God's children. And so the, I wanted to, we wanted to just hand out um, the pins and certificates to our PBE team. We're very, very proud of them. It's a huge commitment. Um, we don't have everything today, but it's a start. So we're so proud of you. They got second place at the North Pacific Union, and it was a huge achievement. So. Thank you, girls. Before we move any further, um, I just want to say thank you to Miss Catherine for keeping us all in line and for, um, <laughs> for teaching us um, how to study and be um, really into the word and how to work as a team. And Miss Tara, thank you so much for being assistant coach. So the four of us girls have a couple of little things for you guys. If you would stand up here, please. These girls were amazing, and it was just a privilege to study the Bible together and realize how much brains can hold, and it's amazing. I had a really good time um, writing questions at midnight sometimes. Um, it, was, it was a lot of fun, and it was fun going on the trips and watching them compete, and I, I was just blown away by how much they retained, because I told Monica at the beginning of the year, I, was, I said, you know, I'm going to memorize this with you. I lasted through Ruth chapter 2, and I was like, no, I can't do it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but she kept on, and I'm so proud of her, and I'm proud of all these girls. Thank you so much, girls. And at this, yes, you can go back to your seats. This time I'd like to ask the friend class to line up and we will pass out the um, friend class achievements. And if you can um, come forward and then line up in the, in the aisle and then come along and shake the hands of the, just like we practice. Brinley has earned five honors this year.
Chanel has earned eight honors this year, as well as her friend achievement. <laughs> Michael has earned eight honors, as well as his friend's class achievement. <laughs> Logan has earned eight honors, as well as his friend's class achievement. Malachi has earned five honors. <laughs> and Jaden joined us just a month ago. A month ago? And he has earned one honor, and he's actually in the companion class. So he's going to start us off for the companion class. All right, can the companions please come forward? <laughs> One of the lovely things about our year has been that we had new members joining throughout the year, and we're so happy for our new members. We've had, uh, I think, about five new people join us, and it, they've been wonderful parts of the family. Teresa has earned seven honors this year, as well as her companion class achievement. <laughs> Ash Marie has earned five honors this year, as well as her companion class achievement. <laughs> Monica has earned 16 honors this year, her companion class achievement, and has finally rece is receiving her baptismal pin. Jeffrey has earned seven honors this year, as well as his companion class achievement. <laughs> and Isaac has earned five honors this year. Can I have the Explorer class come forward? All right, Ashla has earned eight honors this year as well as the Explorer achievement. And Trista has earned six honors this year. <laughs> All right, the Ranger class, can I have you guys come forward? Andrew has earned four honors this year, as well as his Ranger achievement. And Matthew has earned five honors this year, as well his, as his Ranger achievement and the advanced pin. I have the Voyager class come forward.
Ella has earned eight honors this year, as well as the Voyager class achievement. Callie has earned seven honors this year, as well as the Voyager class achievement. Chris has earned nine honors this year, as well as the Voyager class achievement. Kian has earned 27 honors this year, as well as the Voyager class achievement and his advanced pin. And our guide class slash junior staff come forward. Megan has earned 26 honors this year. And Carissa has earned two honors this year. Kent and Cheryl have earned three honors this year, and Miss Catherine's gonna bring them their honors. <laughs> and Tom has earned three honors this year. I saw her give that one. <laughs> And Raleigh has earned four honors this year. And Miss Lola has earned two honors this year. And Terry has earned three honors this year. And Miss Catherine has earned two honors this year. And Tara has earned a lot, nine. At this time, we'd like our pathfinders to stand and we'd like, we'd like to ask um, Bethany, our coordinator, to um, give us a dedicatory prayer. Thank you for being here. Uh, please bow your heads. Pathfinder's attention and parade rest and then prayer attention. Thank you. Father in heaven, we come to you today and we just have gratitude in our hearts for all the blessings that you've given us on this Sabbath day. I want to ask a special blessing on this Pathfinder Club that stands before you right now. I ask that you draw near to them in a special way and impress on their hearts in new ways each day that you are in their lives. I ask that you send your Holy Spirit to encourage them as they walk through the trials that this life sometimes has to offer and that you give them encouragement when they need it and that you remind them each and every day that you are there for them and they can count on you. And please give them your grace and mercy when they may fall short. 
Lord, I ask you to take the soil of their fertile hearts and to help it, help it to grow and flourish as the seeds that this Pathfinder staff has planted in them continues to grow and expand until the day of harvest. I ask that you put a hedge of protection around their hearts until that day. Please pour your unending love into their lives and help them to know that you are their father and that they can come to you and depend on you for anything. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to our master guides. I forgot two things. Um, Terry has something to present. I would like uh, Matthew and Kean to come up here for a second. Now, these gentlemen were asked to do security at the Pathfinder Fair. Guess what time they got? 1 a.m. and to 2 a.m. All right, they kind of volunteered. I know Matthew volunteered. <laughs> Kian may have really volunteered. At any rate, we, um, our job was to keep the camp safe for um, all the Pathfinders there, not just our Pathfinders. And so um, we were doing our job, and we came across a suspicious vehicle that came in. Uh, it was quite late, and so uh, we went to go rouse them up a little bit to find out what the deal was. was. And um, we um, asked them to get out of their car registration, driver's license. Come to find out, it was our cook. <laughs> so um, I want to uh, give these gentlemen a, a, a little appreciation of the uh, um, quick to uh, help us out, uh, even if it's 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning. They're going to get a, a, a flashlight that's quite bright, because we really needed it that night, right, Raleigh? We're very thankful for our senior pathfinders, and thank you. Each year we do recognize a junior pathfinder and a senior pathfinder for excellence and willingness and just general, someone we're generally impressed with. And um, this year, um, we picked um, Kirsten McCormick for outstanding attitude and helpfulness. And unfortunately, she's not here today. She's sick. But maybe, Megan, you could come and take it for her. So proud of her. We're very proud of her. <laughs> and our other... Our Teen Pathfinder of the Year is Matthew Roth. I'd like to ask him to come forward. We'd like to thank him for his... Matthew. We'd like to thank him for his work ethic. He's always willing to help, his service, and his teaching of other Pathfinders. We're very thankful to him. I'd like Chanel to come forward at this time to call for the offering. Do you want to just do it from here? Just... This offering is for the church church budget which supports all ministries including Pathfinders.
Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that all of us can make it today, and thank you for the for all we have learned this year. Please bless this offering. Amen. Young people, would love to, for you to come down here, and on your way down, if you could look for those bills waving at you for student tuition assistance, please pick up that offering. We would appreciate it. Come on down. young people go ahead and just sit on the floor here and look toward the platform to see what is in store for you from Acts chapter 12 about that time King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church he had the apostle James, John's brother, arrested. And killed him with the sword. <laughs> when Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter.
Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring Peter out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. I repeat, the church prayed very earnestly for him. The night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains between two soldiers. Other guards kept watch at the door. Suddenly, there was a bright light in the cell, and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side. I repeat, the angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up, and the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals, and he did. Now, put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered, and he did. So Peter left the cell following the angel, but all the time he thought he was dreaming, he didn't realize it was actually happening. They passed the first and second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city, and this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street, and then suddenly the angel disappeared. Peter now realized what had happened. It's really true, he said to himself. The, angel has sent his an the Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from the, what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. When he realized this, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many were gathered for prayer. Peter knocked at the door in the gate. And a servant girl named Rhoda came to open it. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed that instead of opening the door, she ran back inside and told everyone, Peter is standing at the door. You're crazy. You're out of your mind, they said. But when she kept on saying it was Peter, they decided, oh, it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter kept on knocking until they finally opened the door, and when they saw him, they were completely amazed. Then Peter motioned for them to quiet down and told them how the Lord had led him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers what happened, he said, and then he went to another place. The next morning... There was a great commotion among the soldiers about what had happened to Peter. Herod was not pleased. <laughs> and the church once more realized that God really does answer their prayers. The end. <laughs> Thank you for coming up. You can go back to your seats now.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> We're here to, to sing for you and with you, and we'd like you to sing loudly so that we can feel comfortable. <laughs> so we don't care what you sound like, though.
we have a little bit of a thing, but we are going to pray now. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that we can be here in church together. And thank you that we have this wonderful Sabbath that we can celebrate the Pathfinders and what we're doing. And please be with the church and our different ministries, what we're doing overseas. Help us, not overseas, help us to be able to serve you well and enjoy our Sabbath and have a, a good rest of our day. In your name, amen. Today's scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians 10.31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. I'm pretty proud of our Pathfinders. What do you think, church? They've been a blessing. Yes. Thank you so much. If you haven't figured it out, we love and appreciate you. So thank you so much for leading out in worship today. And again, I want to add my uh, gratitude that Lola is able to be here, having come through surgery. It was touchy whether she could even show up, so we're glad that you made it, Lola. And we appreciate your leadership in this team, big time. One of the things I like about the Pathfinders is the Pledge in Law. How many of you have memorized that? <clears throat> okay, some have, that's right. <laughs> uh, sometimes I... I think I have, and sometimes I remember that I maybe haven't because <laughs> things kind of slip too quick. But I like the, the start of the pledge. By the grace of God, and say it with me, I will be pure, kind, and true. I will keep the Pathfinder law. 
I will be a servant of God and a friend to man. And then the next part, the law is for me to keep the morning watch, do your honest part, care for my body, keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly in the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart, and go on God's errands. The one thing that I just kind of slip real quick over is be courteous and obedient. Be courteous and obedient. Would you agree that in our current society, courtesy is less common than it used to be? Would you agree with that? Okay. Case in point, seems like the airline industry is one arena which has been plagued over the last couple of years with higher incidences of discourteous behavior. Have you seen that in the news? Just look it up sometime, and you'll be amazed at the level of discourteous, rude behavior on airlines. And need I, need I say anything to this audience about drivers? None here, of course, but rude, discourteous drivers on the streets. You've all encountered them, haven't you? And you've smiled. <laughs> <laughs> You've gone your way. And would you agree that the increasingly discourteous, rude culture in which we live is expressed in attitudes, it's expressed in words, and it's expressed in actions? I believe it was May 11, KHQ Local News reported that the Washington State Department of Transportation spent a little bit of time on a one-mile strip from the, I believe it was the West uh, Sprague on-ramp. Now, you got to have that on I-90 here, the West Ramp of Sprague uh, to the Havana Street exit. They picked up 1,800 pounds of litter. I call that discourteous, that they would have to do that. They were courteous doing it. But li really? Actions, yes, are rude actions, attitudes, behaviors. Yeah, it's, it's rampant in our culture today. Have you ever been at the receiving end of rude or discourteous behavior? Have you ever been at the receiving end of that? Yeah, yeah. What might drive discourteous attitudes, words, and actions. What about elitist, arrogant attitudes? You know, which think, my social status is higher than yours, therefore I'm better or more powerful than you, and it's my calling in life to be sure you know it. <laughs> An elitist, arrogant attitude. Could it be the entitlement mentalities which muse, I deserve to be served. Serving others is beneath me. I pay my taxes, therefore I'm, therefore I'm entitled to, and fill in the blank, so someone else can do it. It's my turn to relax. Can I come home a little closer? We're in that season called nominating time, where we place people in meaningful ministry, right? here in this church, and I just really want to ask you to do something. If you are called to serve somehow, please don't say, I've done my time. <laughs> Sounds like you've been to the prison, all right? I've done my time. I've served my time. Let someone else do it. Did I really just say that? Yeah, okay. Just keep that in mind. So what might drive the discourteous attitudes, words, and actions in our culture today? Yes, these arrogant, elitist attitudes, entitlement mentalities, and it can all be boiled down to one motivation, selfishness. Can I be that blunt? It's the Bible, selfishness. It's the selfishness that says, I don't give a rip how my attitudes, my words, and my actions really affect you. I don't care. So I'm going to throw my litter out the window. Let someone else pick it up. You know, I really appreciate 
that pathfinders are trained that when they go to some place like a campground, they leave it better than when they found it. Isn't that awesome? I think that's wonderful. So thank you, Pathfinders, for modeling that to the rest of us. So how are we doing with our CQ this morning, our courtesy quotient? Well, to find out, let's take a fun little test with our EQ, our etiquette, etiquette quotient, assessment questionnaire. Uh, based on what used to be common courtesy, okay? So get your minds in gear here. I'm going to take a little test here. It's a multi-choice. Um, and this is common courtesy that's found in America because in different parts of the world, courtesy is different. Like I've heard that some countries, it's, it's discourteous not to burp after a meal, okay? Um, so kids, I hope you don't try to look up where that is and maybe go there on a mission trip. But talking about in American culture, what is courteous, all right? So I've got a few things here that I want to share with you and get your feedback on. Number one, at a formal dinner, when should one start eating the main course? After the hostess is served or after the hostess lifts her fork or after three or four people have their food or as soon as possible, with urgency and passion, once it comes. Just <laughs> go right at it. Okay, number two, what does one do at a formal dinner if one is still hungry after the main course? Request a second helping? Ask in a plaintive voice, is that all there is? <laughs> Yell, look out the window and take food from your neighbor's plate while they're distracted. Or surreptitiously called Domino's Pizza, <laughs> meet you on the way out. When you spill food on the floor at a restaurant, do you expect the busboy to clean it up? Do you tell the waiter the previous customer dropped it? <laughs> uh, with your foot, do you push it under the adjacent table when no one's looking? Or do you drop your napkin over it before leaving? <laughs> I guess I should have included E, none of the above, but we'll keep on going. Number four, when you've served an item, when you've been served an item at someone's home that you detest. I've been through this, by the way. Not, not any of your homes. This was a long time ago. <laughs> when you've been served an item at someone's home that you detest, do you say that you're too full to finish while complimenting the cook? Or do you accidentally drop your plate on the floor and ask for a new plate? <laughs> Kids don't do that, all right? Do you ask the host, what's hanging out of your nostril, and slide the food to someone else's plate <laughs> while they're distracted? You know you'll look if you ever hear that. Okay. Or do you plop the food on the floor so their dog will eat it while praying that they have a dog? <laughs> okay, number five, what is the correct response if one's cell phone goes off in church? Okay. Quickly slide it to, close to the person sitting beside you and point disgustedly at that person. <sighs> okay. Shout, hallelujah, hallelujah, until it stops ringing. <laughs> and that's probably more for charismatics, and that's okay. Give a larger than usual offering. Or answer the phone, then yell, my baby, and run out of the room. <laughs> And that's probably best done if you actually have young kids. <laughs> if you don't, then all right. And last, uh, when you're late for an appointment, uh, do you tell them once you get there that your dog ate your calendar and you couldn't remember when you were expected? Or do you suggest that they recorded the wrong time on their calendar? Or before arriving, do you adjust your watch to show them when you get there that you really are on time? <laughs> Or do you explain that you accidentally picked up someone else's cell phone in church and it had the wrong calendar on it? I don't know. How, how are you doing with etiquette? All right? How are you doing with etiquette? How am I doing with etiquette? I really think we need to just focus for a few moments on one last thing, and that is this. What does the common courtesy of Jesus 
look like? And how do we embrace it? What does the common courtesy of Jesus look like, which actually seems like it's not so common anymore, and how do we embrace it? Okay? Four things. And there's a little outline, a place for you to write down some texts if you'd like in your bulletin, but four things to keep in mind. Like Jesus, number one, pray for other centered love and believe that you receive it. Pray for other centered love, the love that's more concerned about the other than oneself. And believe, once you've prayed for that love to fill your heart, that you've actually received it. Believe it like Rhoda believed it. Not so much like the church that was praying, they didn't believe that Peter was really standing at the gate, okay? Believe that you've actually received it, all right? So pray for that. In Mark 1.35, it says that Jesus, a great while before dawn, went out into a solitary place, and there he prayed. That's right. Romans 5.5 5 talks about how the love of God through the Holy Spirit has been poured out into our hearts, Right? And so, I, I love how, how it's recorded, Jesus praying to His Father, Father, I thank You. This was right before uh, He raised Lazarus from the dead. He already believed that it was going to ha happen, and He said, Father, I thank You ahead of time, all right? So, believe it. Pray, pray for other-centered love and believe you will receive it. Number two, number two, reject the it's-not-my-job attitude by embracing the humility of Jesus. Reject the it's not my job attitude by embracing the humility of Jesus. Let's look up Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Philippians 2, 3 and 4 in the context of showing the condescension of Jesus in this chapter. It starts out with that in mind, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version, and it states this, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, that's that arrogance, but in what? Humility. Count others more significant than yourselves better than yourselves. Count others better than yourselves. Let each one of you, verse 4, not only look to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. All right? I think that's beautifully put. The humility of Jesus is very other-centered. The humility of Jesus in my heart will lead me to look at others as better than myself. And that's what diffuses the elitist entitlement mentalities that are so easy to embrace, okay? Number three, reflect God's considerate love in non-offensive serving ways. Reflect God's considerate love in non-offensive serving ways. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10.31. And thanks again, Malachi, for reading that so nicely for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Paul speaking to the believers in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So, whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. How do we glorify God? We reflect Him, right? By God's grace. Starts out the pledge, Pathfinder pledge, pledge, by the grace of God. That's reflecting Him. When it talks about glorifying God, it means reflecting Him. Look at just another couple of texts here, verse 32. Give no offense. Be mindful of how our behaviors, attitudes, words might be offensive unnecessarily, okay? Give no offense to Jews or to Greeks or the church of God. That means in here, right? Say yes. That means in here, right? Say yes. Okay, good. Verse 33, just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, not seeking my own advantage, 
but that of many, the advantage of many that they may be saved. I love that. I think that's beautiful. The glory of God, giving no offense, not seeking my own advantage. That's talking about reflecting God's considerate love in non-offensive serving ways, and that is best done by considering the person's thoughts and feelings, being considerate of the other person's thoughts and feelings. I love how Jesus modeled this. Resurrection morning, John chapter 20 reflects it. John chapter 20, let's look at it real quick. John chapter 20, and Jesus has been resurrected, and Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb early. Stone was rolled away. She ran and told uh, Simon Peter and the other disciples and said, that they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. Verse 3, so Peter went out with the other disciple, that would be John, and they were going toward the tomb. Verse 4, both of them were running together. Yesterday we had the fun run right here, our uh, school fun run. Lots of running going on, and it was fun as I watched them run. It was real fun. <laughs> I walked around three times. You know, don't judge me. Come on. <laughs> But the other disciple, that's John, outran Peter and reached the tomb first. Verse 5, and stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came up, huffing and puffing, followed him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. And then John, oh, I can't, I, I imagine that he said to himself, this reminds me of what Jesus would do. He would think of others. He would fold up that face cloth, and he would set it aside real nicely. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it would give evidence that Jesus had not been stolen away by thieves but that he had actually risen. The courteous Christ had done something nice for whoever would have to clean up after him as well. That's the other reason. I think he was modeling that for us, that kind of courtesy. I think that's beautiful. In John 19, just uh, turn back to John 19, verses 10 and 11. This is the second visit or interview with Pilate. And you remember how Pilate just starts asking him those questions again, and Pilate said to him, and Jesus didn't give him an answer, verse 10. So Pilate said to him, you will, not, you will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered, verse 11, you would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered you, me to you has the greater sin. Where's the courtesy in that? Look at what Jesus was doing. Jesus knew the mental anguish that Pilate would be going through later on, how he would be so anguished that he would end up taking his own life. And Jesus was trying to soften the blow, soften the blow for Pilate. That's courtesy. That's consideration of the other person, okay? Uh, it's best done by considering their thoughts and feelings, and it's best done by anticipating their needs. Do you remember when Jesus in Mark 5, you can look this up later, in Mark 5, how uh, uh, the daughter had died, and he went to the place, and they laughed at him, and they said, get out, and went in there and said, Talitha, arise, and she was raised from the dead. Do you remember that? And do you remember what Jesus said? Get her some food. She's hungry. Wow. Get her some food, considering, anticipating a person's needs. That little girl had been sick, probably had an empty stomach, if you know what I mean, and she had died. And he realized that she would be famished, like many of you probably are right now. Famished, okay? Don't be thinking about that. Famished. And Jesus had the consideration to anticipate her needs and say, hey, get her some food now, right now, please. I like that about Jesus, don't you? Consider it, anticipating their needs. So, number three is reflect God's considerate love in non-offensive serving ways, and that's best done by considering their thoughts and feelings and anticipating their needs. Number four, overcome evil with good. Romans 12, 21, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay? That's how we learn how to embrace 
the courtesy, the consideration of Jesus to show to others. Overcome evil with good. It was Christmas time in 2016. The Kettering Seventh day Adventist Church School was going on a choir tour to Chicago. They were riding in a public bus, not one of their own, a public bus. And as they were going along, there was a gentleman on the bus that started getting very agitated <laughs> and very hostile toward the kids and their sponsors that were with them from this Seventh-day Adventist school, the choir members. He started getting more and more hostile and started accusing one of the, the uh, uh, sponsors as, as being you know, a, a terrorist. Well, now that was no small accusation that had to be dealt with, and it's like, wow, what do we do now? And he kept getting more and more agitated, more and more riled up. Uh, Darren Wilkins, the principal, later said this, the situation could have easily escalated. You can imagine trapped there on that public bus. Instead, a miracle happened. Another sponsor quietly suggested that the kids start singing. It was Christmas time, and so timidly at first, you know, the word spread around, timidly, timidly at first they started singing, and then with more and more courage, their songs started filling the bus with the beautiful sounds of Christmas. And the tormentor was at first very annoyed, and then he was resigned, and then he was moved to tears. The final note triggered applause throughout the bus, <laughs> and then spontaneously the choir struck up, Oh, Holy Night, and it sounded like a bus full of angels going through the streets of Chicago. And as song after song washed over the passengers, the angry man forgot his rage and absorbed the good news of peace on earth and the beautiful message of the courtesy of Jesus Christ. My friends, I want to urge all of us to take seriously the courtesy of Jesus and when we're tempted to respond to rude attitudes, words, actions directed toward us, when we're tempted to respond in kind, by God's grace, may we all think of Jesus and respond with courtesy just like He would. Is that your desire? Mine too. Let's pray. Father, thank You so much for sending Jesus to show us another way of how we can relate well with others. Thank You so much that Christ's life was commonly seen as very courteous, very considerate. And may we as pathfinders and as this church family reflect that same courtesy to others so that they will think about Jesus, is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again so much for being here, and Pathfinders, we love and appreciate you. We are proud of you. Amen, church? Amen.